Hey everybody, so today in this video, we're going to talk about how to send a dispute letter to a debt collector. We're going to talk about what to say in your letter, and we're going to talk about what to look for after you send your dispute letter to these debt collectors, okay? So when trying to remove negative items from your credit report, we have to make sure that we are using the right words, okay? When you are disputing, your verbiage has to be on point. You cannot use the words you think you should use. And this is why it's so important to study the law because if you are reading a law, the law lays it out exactly what you should say to these people. Because what if you have to eventually sue them? You want to make sure your letter makes sense to the courts. You don't want to just use anything. So we're going to talk about the right words to use in your dispute letter. We also want to make sure that we are demanding the right information from these people. We're not asking them to do anything. We are demanding them to do certain things because we are finding violations. And when you find violations, you want to demand what you want in your dispute letter so that is so important i can't stress that enough okay so what do you typically say in a dispute letter you want to say first i am disputing any and all debt your company claim to have on me any and all debt you don't want to mention account numbers you don't want to do that you don't want to say one two three four account number to this chase you know this chase account the account number is one two three four they may switch it up and say one two three five Debt collectors lie. They alter contracts and all of that. So you want to make sure that you are clear in what you are disputing and to just make it easy and simple. Say, I am disputing any and all debts you claim to have on me. According to 15 U.S.C. 1692 CC, the law states that. So I'm going to show you guys um, why I say stick to what the law is saying. Don't come up with no verbiage. Look at your laws and apply it in your letters okay i want you guys to go to 15 usc 1692 cc this is communication and connection with debt collection okay so you want to go down to c you can google it and google search you know do it on your phone your computer and go down to c where it says ceasing communication okay it says if a com if a consumer notifies a debt collector in writing that the consumer refuses to pay a debt or the debt, I'm sorry, let me start over. So if a consumer notifies a debt collector in writing that the consumer refuses to pay a debt or that the consumer wishes that the debt collector cease further communication with the consumer, the debt collector shall not communicate further with the consumer with respect to such debt, meaning the debt that you had disputed with them. This is why I say use the law verbiage, okay? If you go over that again, the first line say, if a consumer notifies a debt collector in writing, so you notify them in writing, that the consumer refuses to pay a debt. I refuse to pay any and all debt your company claim to have on me. <laughs> That's what you need to do. You use the law. So next, you want them to provide proof. You want them to provide a copy of the application for credit, a copy of the cardholder agreement, the contract. You need it all. Okay, you need the transactional history, you need the ledger, you want all account documents, you want to ask them what is their authority to collect on this debt, you want them to prove that they own this debt. Okay, so that's the whole point of that part, you want proof, I need proof, I need information, I need it all. And your last step in your dispute letter will be letting them know to cease all communication concerning this debt that you may owe them cease all collection activities okay and i'm gonna show you in 15 usc 1692 cc where it tells you about the cease okay cease part of it you want to use their verbiage so we're going to start at c where we was at before so c send communication if a consumer notifies a debt collector in writing that the consumer refuses to pay the debt that's the first step we did a debt a debt or that the consumer wishes that the debt collector to cease, wishes that the debt collector to cease further communications. So you're telling them to cease communication, cease um, sending me voicemails, cease sending me emails, okay? And this is the only way I want you to send communication to me. You let them know. You demand that they only send correspondence through mail, 
Cease all the communication. Don't be calling my job. Don't be doing none of that. I'm telling you to cease. Y'all got to understand the power of putting these people on notice. This is a notice, okay? So you want to make sure that you provide the address where you want them to send your mail to. And you want to make sure that you certify your mail. Keep all copies of all your documentation. Never just send it out, you know, mail your letters regularly. Nah, we got to keep documents. Like I said, you may have to sue these people if they don't respond the right way. So we want to make copies and we want to make sure that we keep a file of our information. Let them know in your letter this address right here. Cease all the other communication. You have to be clear, okay? Now, what exactly are you looking for after you have sent your dispute letter? Okay, there's two things I'm going to let you know that you want to make sure you look for after you sent that information to them. Now, we talked about um, making sure that we that they we demand that they send us the account history, okay, the ledger, you know, all the information providing proof that the debt um, belonged to them and providing proof that you owe them. You want to make sure you get that. That's one thing that you want to make sure you get. And also remember, you told them to cease communication of the debt, meaning that they shouldn't be having any collection activities going on with that debt. They shouldn't be reporting it to the, the consumer reporting agencies. They shouldn't be doing that. So I'm going to go to um, the law and show you guys. Go to 15 U.S.C. 1692 E.A. E8, like the number eight. So go down to eight and it says communicating or threaten to communicate to any person, meaning to any consumer report agency, credit information, reporting your credit information, which is known or which should be known to be false. They know it's false information because we're disputing it. So for instance, if you have a charge off and we know a charge off is not debt, it's actually income you know, defined by the IRS. So we disputing it. It's false information. So the law is telling you right here, this says if they communicate about the debt, so if they do any updates about this debt, they must only update and say this debt has been disputed. A lot of the times debt collectors don't do that. You know why? Is because when you mark something on your credit report as disputed, it no longer have an effect on your credit score. It no longer have an effect on your credit score. So what they would try to do is freeze your account. They would try to freeze it. And that's against the law, too. If they decide to update anything on your credit report after you disputed it, if they say 30 days late, that's against the law, because the only thing they should be saying is that this debt has been disputed. If they report anything about that debt after you put them on notice, that's against the law. That's a violation. They should only say it's been disputed. And the reason why they don't want to do that, because they know that it's not going to affect your credit score anymore. They're going to try to freeze it. So let me talk about this freeze. That is against the law. If they freeze your account, you can write the, the consumer reporting agencies and say, hey, why is this account on my credit report? It's frozen. Nothing is going on. There's no activity. Remove this. This is inaccurate information. So that's how you send a letter to a debt collector. You want to do them things that I talked about in this video, okay? And what you want to look for is exactly what I talked about. The most important one is making sure they did not update anything. And if they did, that's a violation if they have not updated it as disputed. And what you can do next is sue them. That's why you want to keep documentations and get your remedy. It's that easy. We got to understand these people are just... Random people that started business, they're no better than you. They're no higher than you. They're reporting information on you. So you have the right to send out information, requesting and demanding information, and they must send it to you. And if they don't send it to you, voila, I'm taking you to court. Okay, so don't wait to be great.